हाय आई एम डॉक्टर विकास गोस्वामी सीनियर कंसल्टेंट डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मेडिकल ऑनकोलॉजी एट मैक्स हॉस्पिटल आई एम बेसिकली इन टू द फील्ड ऑफ कैंसर ट्रीटमेंट एंड कैंसर प्रिवेंशन सो टुडे आई एम गोन टू टॉक अबाउट समथिंग विच इज़ वेरी कॉमन दैट इज लंग कैंसर सो फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट वी नीड टू नो वॉट इज द इंसिडेंस ऑफ लंग कैंसर by incidence i mean how common is it is it common or is it uncommon so lung cancer in india is the second most common cancer occurring in males and fourth most common cancer occurring in females are you at risk are you at risk of developing lung cancer so we need to know the risk factors the most common risk factor is smoking 90% patients who have had a history of lung cancer have history of smoking now smoking can be uh, in the form of cigarettes in the form of bd in the form of e cigarettes or it can be in the form of uh, smokeless tobacco in the form of gutka or uh, other forms of chewable tobacco which we consume all of them all of them can cause lung cancer there is a myth that e cigarettes are safe that myth is wrong it's not the case even e cigarettes called cause lung cancer some people think that uh, smoking shisha there are shisha bars they are safe even that is not safe even that is a cause of lung cancer so much so that every day 3500 documented cases of cancer are attributed to tobacco alone so tobacco is the number one form of uh, number one reason for lung cancer now if you don't smoke doesn't mean that you are completely out of risk because a smoker can also cause lung cancer to the people who are around him that's called as a second hand smoke first hand smoke is somebody who smokes directly second hand smoke is let's say my family member or my friend smokes and i am sitting around i am exposed to the fumes so i am also at risk so people who are exposed to second hand smoke are also at risk of developing lung cancer there is something called as a third hand smoke tertiary smoking what is that that if you are sitting in an enclosed room where people are actively smoking then the fumes kind of cling on to the carpets the uh, the curtains the the furniture exposing yourself into such environment also increases your risk of lung cancer so first hand smoke second hand smoke third hand smoke all of them cause lung cancer but the good news is that if you stop smoking your risk of developing lung cancer starts decreasing so the first thing is stop dec decrease your smoking uh, stop your smoking rather uh, advise your friends and your family members to stop smoking not only does it decrease the incidence of lung cancer in them but also in you now there are also other causes of uh, lung cancer smoking we we see 90% cases yes they do have a history of smoking but 10% don't out of the 10% some are exposed to second or third hand smoking but there are other people who there are other causes which can cause lung cancer now the most common cause which is pertinent to us is pollution who has labeled pollution as a uh, carcinogen pollution is a mixture of various things it's a mixture of pm 2.5 particles it's a mixture of construction material now construction material like silica asbestos is a risk factor for lung cancer in our part of the country like delhi lot of uh, construction activity is happening and that's a cause of uh, pollution if you remember whenever the pollution is very high the government first of all stops construction activities so such uh, material is also a cause of risk factor exposing yourself to certain chemicals like workers who are in iron founding industries people who are exposed to uh, let's say paint industry people who are exposed to polycyclic aromatic compounds for example people working in petrol pumps these are the people who are also at risk of developing lung cancer 
Another interesting thing is something called as radon gas. Exposure to radon gas is a very big risk factor in non-smokers. Now radon gas is a colorless odorless gas usually secreted by the environment, by the soil. In countries like US, they usually do a mapping where the radon gets excreted. In our country, we don't have such data. Radon gets accumulated in closed buildings. Radon gets accumulated specifically in the basements. So if you are working in closed buildings and in basements where there is no ventilation, there is a possibility that you might be getting exposed to radon. There is a term called a sick building syndrome. If you search this term on Google, you will find the correlation between sick building syndrome, radon gas and lung cancer. Another risk factor for lung cancer is alcohol. If you, if you consume alcohol, your chances of uh, developing lung cancer increase. So all in all, the causes are tobacco, uh, a major cause, but there are other causes like pollution, getting exposed to chemicals, sick building syndrome. Now coming to the symptoms, how does one think that a person might be having lung cancer? So first of all, there has to be a risk factor. Usually there is a risk factor of tobacco. Then the symptoms are uh, shortness of breath because it's a lung cancer. So of, of course, shortness of breath might be a symptom. The other symptoms can be uh, chest pain, blood in sputum. Somebody has a persistent cough with blood, change of voice, hoarseness of voice. These are some common symptoms. Then there can be uncommon symptoms of metastasis, for example, bone pains of swelling of face, weakness of muscles of the hand. These are some of the symptoms which might be uh, attributed to the metastasis of lung cancer. Now the problem is that people who smoke usually have COPD, it's a disease of the lung. They also have uh, shortness of breath. Now they often attri attribute their shortness of breath to smoking. That is number one reason for missing lung cancer early. Number two is in India, usually uh, people are not aware, even doctors working in the periphery are not aware that lung cancer can manifest. So sometimes it might so happen that a patient is mistreated for tuberculosis for a very long time. So if you have the symptoms, you should certainly consult your doctors regarding uh, the suspicion of lung cancer. You should uh, often ask your doctors by any chance do I have lung cancer or not if we are suspecting lung cancer what do we do the first investigation which we do is imaging various forms of imaging of the chest are chest x-ray CT scan of the chest if on imaging we find something suspicious the next investigation is biopsy and FNAC now, by, what do I mean by biopsy is that we take a small tissue from the suspected tumor and subject it to the laboratory for testing. If it turns out to be lung cancer, the next question which we want to know is what is the subtype of lung cancer. Now, the subtype of lung cancer can be non-squamous lung cancer or a, uh, adenocarcinoma. So, it's broadly divided into non-small cell and small cell. Small cells are usually chemosensitive and non-small cells we have a plethora of targets to attack. Before we start the treatment we do something which is called as staging. By staging I mean whether we want to know whether the tumor is localized to the lung or it has spread out to the body. The usual sites of metastasis for lung cancer are that uh, the lung cancer goes to liver, the lung cancer goes to bones, the lung cancer goes to brain. These are the usual sites of metastasis. So this is usually clear by doing a PET CT and sometimes doing an MRI of the brain. After doing staging, we broadly divide the lung cancer into whether it is localized, that is limited to the lung or it has spread out. A cancer which is localized, usually if it is early, we try to do a surgery. In stage 1, we usually do a surgery. Stage 2, we usually do a surgery followed by something. That something might be radiation or chemo. In stage 3, we usually do 
either surgery or radiation as the primary modality of treatment. A stage 4 which is like an extensive disease is usually treated with medicines. The moment we see a stage 4 cancer, the first thing which we want to know for in a non-small cell lung cancer is are there any driver mutations? Are there specific type of mutations for which we can give personalized treatment? Now the mutations means changes in the DNA which propelled this cancer, which caused this cancer. So the mutations are usually studied in the lab based upon certain uh, reports. Now let's say the tumor has a specific mutation. We have specific medicines for that mutation. So we have something called as EGFR mutation. If it is prevalent, then we have a medicine called as erlotinib or jeftinib. That is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor. If we have, let's say, ALK mutation, we have a me medicine for that. Another very potent class of drugs which are active in lung cancer right from the start is called as immunotherapy. So we can give oral tablets, we can give immunotherapy and the backbone of the disease in the last we can give uh, chemotherapy. Usually the survival of a stage 4 cancer uh, these days uh, is the average survival has crossed one and a half to two years. Now that's a very promising news. So to sum it up, one should be aware what are the risk factors for lung cancer, what are the symptoms for lung cancer, whether the lung cancer, if somebody has it, is localized or advanced. That is one question which you should ask. And the treatment, like I told you, if it is advanced, we usually give uh, targeted medicines in the form of immunotherapy, oral tablets or chemotherapies. If it is localized, we try to restrict it by doing a radiotherapy or a surgery. Lung cancer is a lethal disease, but we are progressing on the path to make it a chronic disease. On your part, you should try to reduce the risk factors, which is try to reduce your smoking. If you're a non-smoker, try to reduce the smoking in your immediate environment. If that is also clean, restrict yourself by ex exposing less to the pollution. Thank you.